Hi there, welcome to my uh, new video, uh, Beginner's Guide to uh, Moth Identification. Uh, my name is Martin Priestley, I've been uh, moth trapping now for oh, well over 20 years uh, and I'm also the wildlife recorder for the uh, Lawnmower and Openshaw Conservation Group. In this video I'll be discussing moth identification and how to improve that, moth families, moth anatomy and also there's a, a few useful moth tips throughout the videos. So you've bought your moth trap, you've bought your identification books, and away you go. However, if you were anything like me all those years ago, you may be struggling with identification, or simply you may want to improve your identification skills as a, as a beginner. If so, this video is for you. So let's get started. Firstly, it's difficult to correctly ID a moth if you don't know the, the anatomy of the moth. Now, once you've learnt the anatomy, you'll be able to look for the key features of your moth. This will then be a great step forward in trying to get a correct identification. If you think about it, if you look in a moth book and it states there are small dark dashes near the term, and if you don't know where the term is, it's going to be very difficult. So here we have a basic illustration of a moth's anatomy, showing the anatomical terms used in most moth guides. So learning all these parts... Uh, and terms that are used here. Uh, it's going to greatly help you in identifying moths later on down the line. Now here on the moth's foot forewing now we can see some uh, kidney marks and oval marks and some uh, cross lines. These are all key identification features in uh, a lot of the moths and you must pay attention to these. Um, some of the kidney marks uh, may be light centred, they may be dark centred, um, the cross lines might be wavy they might be straight, so make a note of them. If the moth is showing its underwing, uh, note the colour, note any borders and any other marks on the underwing. Some members of the family Geometridae hold their wings outstretched during the day and a lot of them have um, bands across the, uh, the wings which are good identification features. Another useful aid as well is to uh, measure the forewing of the moth and then you can compare it with uh, any moth guide books. So we've now learned a fair amount about uh, the anatomy of a moth uh, and some identification features and things on that line so I think I don't know about you but let's get outside and uh, look in the garden and let's have a look at some real moths and we can put everything we've learned into practice. So uh, we've come outside now and uh, we're going to have a look at some uh, moths and see um, if we can identify them with all the, um, the things we've talked about, the anatomy and cross lines and all things on that line. So let's have a look. So this is a lime speck pug, part of the uh, Geometridae family. Now we can clearly see on this moth uh, two really clear uh, blackish markings uh, on the costa or the leading edge. We can also see the uh, slightly darker hind wing. Also look at the abdomen as well on this particular moth. It's showing uh, really dark abdomen with some black spots on again another good clue you can see here clearly on this dark arches uh, moth uh, the conspicuous uh, oval and kidney mark but more importantly if you look a little bit further down around about there there um, you can see a W mark near the outer edge and this is um, a constant characteristic of this moth so again it's a cross line but uh, an important uh, W mark uh, which distinguishes this moth. So these are things you should be looking at again. Now this is a sallow moth but um, can you just notice here the um, and again there that the forewing is slightly hooked. So these are things that you should be looking at um, and again you notice the brown patch round about there on the uh, on the costa there again these are all things you should be looking at the row of black dots towards the termin so if that was termed in the moth book um, the black center dot I would say around about two-thirds uh, down now we talked about the, um, the geometridae who uh, tend to hold the wings 
open and flat when resting and this is a good example it's at the bottom of the moth trap um, it's a willow beauty a fairly common moth but you can see these distinguishing lines across the moth there and you can see how the, um, the moth is holding its wings now this is one of the uh, ear moths um, there's four species in the UK but uh, they're extremely difficult to identify correctly uh, without uh, genital examination but the reason why I've shown you this one is because it's an excellent um, you know coloration on it and also you can see the um, oval the kidney marks really clear but you can also see these cross lines are you with me here and they're all these are wavy here all good diagnostic features they may be straight, they may be wavy, so in this particular moth obviously they the wavy. But a good example, a good clear example of uh, the oval and kidney marks of a moth and also the cross lines and where they start from. They're starting from the, the, um, the costa here, going over to the dorsum here. Um, there's a fairly little bit of a, a lightish patch there um, on the, uh, the apex of the moth again I'd be noting that um, and then this band here going across again near the termin um, so they're all good it's a nice clear picture of that of, um, of um, all the identification features that you should be looking for okay so now let's have a quick look at the moth families now you must remember that moths are divided into many families that have different structural characteristics now this provides you with the excellent identific identification information and I've de deliberately spoke about the two largest family of the macro moths the geometrids uh, for instance which have a structural characteristic of having these thin bodies and most hold their wings flat when resting do you remember the willow beauty that we saw at the bottom of the moth trap another example I've used is the, no the noctidaes uh, like the ear moth uh, species that we saw um, most of this family have a structural characteristic of resting with the trailing edge of the forewing brought together or slightly overlapped, a bit like a tent. So you can see now how important it is to learn all the moth families and their structural characteristics. Uh, because if you then look at a moth and you'll be able to say, ah, that moth belongs to, say for instance, the Noctidae family. And you can start searching that family without looking at any other family. Right, so we've, I've got a little tip for you here, um, and that is we've emptied the moth, uh, the moth trap, right? However, we've got a small little moth here, right? There, just there. Now, I know for a fact that that is uh, a straw dot moth, but let's just say, for instance, um, it isn't uh, a straw dot. We don't know what it is. How do we get to photograph it? How do we get to, to look at it and observe it? Right, so what I've got... I don't know whether the camera can see, is a little pot here. Now if anybody wants any information about these, I can, um, I will send you them. But the little potting pots, uh, ideal for moths. And the simple trick is, just to casually, very carefully, put that over the top of the moth. So the moth now is encased. Now what I will do, I will just gently move it towards the front of the moth. Can you see what's happened now? The moth has gone inside there we'll just let it settle down a little bit we've let it settle down and we could actually take a nice photograph there with me other hand and we've got a nice photograph and yes it is a straw dot moth so you can see it's a nice little tip and then we just simply just check it and off it goes So we've come to the end of the, uh, the video now, but before we go, I'd um, just like to uh, mention a couple of points. You may have noticed that I haven't mentioned anything about the micro moths, purely and simply because uh, I advocate that uh, as a beginner you should really be looking at the macro moths first and learning about them, because the micro moths are quite difficult, uh, or they can be quite difficult. Uh, that's 
the first point. The second point, hopefully now, you've got a good grounding now for uh, moth identification uh, and uh, moth anatomy. And that hopefully will spur you on then to learn even more about those two particular uh, subjects, uh, uh, basically. So um, I urge you to have a look at some of my other moth videos that I've uh, got out, especially the ones for beginners. Uh, and I'd love you to subscribe. Any comments are, uh, are welcome. Uh, and all that's left from me now is um, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.